first thing uh, Dan said to me when he came in this morning was, uh, we're still having the uh, reading of the resurrection this morning. <laughs> it's the kind of joy we want. It's, it's kind of keeps me on my toes. Uh, very good. Do you know, it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, they don't know I'm doing this, but um, to see baby Austin here this morning, I'm presuming that's baby Austin, and nothing else has happened uh, in the family. Uh, uh, baby Austin is, uh, is a real miracle, and we, we need to give thanks. And those of you, there'll be some of you here that don't know the story. But over, what, what, when, when was it he was born? His birthday's on Wednesday. Unbelievable. His birthday's on Wednesday. This is, this is insane because uh, he was born incredibly early, 24, five, 25 weeks. Incredible. Sh shouldn't really be here, um, uh, but we know otherwise, don't we? And we dug deep and prayed, and it's amazing that Austin's here. And, and, and we need to remind ourselves and give thanks for what God has done uh, there. Uh, it's an amazing story, and God has clearly got his hand on Austin's life. And it's just so good. I missed, I've been looking, all, I'm looking forward to all year, uh, Austin, the first Sunday where Austin uh, came to church, and I was in hospital when he came. I was gutted. You've no idea how gutted I was that Sunday. And, and so I'm making up for it this morning uh, by, uh, we're going to pray for Austin, continue blessing on his life. But it's just a time for us, especially this morning when we're looking at joy and being thankful. What, uh, sometimes things can happen. You can get used to miracles. You can get used to God's provision. And uh, that's something we want to happen, but we also want to acknowledge it as well. And so um, let's give God a massive round of applause and Austin because it's amazing. So good, so good to have, uh, have him here this morning. So let me just pray, continue blessing. So if you want, reach out your hands, whatever. We're going to pray for Austin this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the miracle um, that has, has happened here. Uh, we thank you for your hand of blessing and healing and protection and restoration on his life. And Lord, we know there's still more to come. We know there's still uh, uh, more prayer needed and uh, more of your provision needed. So Lord, we just pray right now for a fresh outpouring of your spirit on his life, protection, healing on his life. Lord, we thank you for what you've done, but we thank you in advance for what you're going to do in and through his life. Lord, we pray uh, the precious blood of Jesus over his life. Protect him, Lord. Any uh, future procedures and things that need to happen, Lord, we pray your blessing and provision over that, and we just thank you that Austin is going to grow to love and serve you, God. He's going to be a testimony of your goodness, of your blessing. In Jesus' name, we give you praise and thanks. Amen. Amen. So wonderful to have, uh, have Austin. You can cry all you like, Austin. I don't mind. As long as it's crying with laughter, because it's joy this morning. Uh, I'm going to just quickly pray again before I share the message. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word, and I pray that as we look into your word this morning, uh, Lord, you speak to us through your spirit and touch our hearts in your name. Amen. Now, in my wisdom this morning, in my absolute wisdom, I have titled this morning's message, Joy Isn't Coming. Joy is not coming. I'm telling you, joy is not coming. And the sooner the church, Christians, some of you know where I'm going already. The sooner church, Christians get understanding of this, the better. Joy, that sounds brutal, doesn't it? But joy is not coming. 
It's not coming. You thought you were coming to get uh, blessed in church this morning, didn't you? You are. You are definitely going to get blessed. You don't need to leg it. Uh, hear out uh, the full message. Do you know what? Football has been coming home for what, 60 years? <laughs> Nearly 60 years. Next World Cup, football's been coming home, hasn't it? For these magi, joy was coming. But the difference for us is, is different. It's better for us. We don't have to go searching. We don't have to go searching. Joy isn't coming. It's already here. It's already here. We don't have to wait for Christmas Day for joy. We don't have to wait for the 25th. Joy came over 2,000 years ago. And he's still here. He's still here. And I think a problem for the church today, a problem for believers today, is that they're still waiting for Jesus to come. Now, of course, there will be a time when Jesus will return. Of course. Um, but as believers in Christ, we believe, we've said it already numerous times already this morning, we believe his spirit is already here. We believe his spirit is with us. He, we welcomed his presence at the start of this service. But the truth is, as we were walking into church this morning, Jesus was here. Jesus was here in our hearts. That's what we believe. That's what we believe. Jesus lives in our own hearts. You know, praying for Jesus to turn up, I think, is like waiting for a bus when the last one's already been. I actually think that's true. Of course, we pray for a deeper revelation of his spirit. Of course, we pray for a deeper outpouring of the Spirit of God in our hearts, in our lives. Of course we do. But church, what do we believe? What do we believe? Jesus tells me, through Matthew, Matthew 28 verse 20, and you're going to get a lot of Bible references this morning. Jesus tells me, and surely... I am with you always. And surely, I am with you always. To the very end of the age. What do we believe? We don't have to go looking like the Magi. You know, we have, some of you will know this, uh, we have a, a group, a midweek group in church called the Beta Group, which is a great group of uh, a mix of mainly relatively new Christians or people who've come through an Alpha course, but there's a mix of people. It's a great group. And um, God led us to uh, uh, look through the book of Romans with these new uh, uh, believers. Some of you will think, what on earth are you doing? Uh, there is, there's some challenge in the book of Romans, but it's a great... It's a great book, actually, to look at. And there is an incredible verse that we looked at last Tuesday in, in, in the beta group, verse 1 of chapter 5, that says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we were looking at that verse and I was reading some of my Bible notes from one of my uh, Bibles and uh, it said this to a response to that verse and I want to read it to us. 
It says the tenses of verses are very important in Scripture. For they tell us what God has already done. What he is doing now and what he promises to do in the future. We are to believe what he has already accomplished. For we would be guilty of unbelief if we asked him to do what he's already done. That last bit is so key. We are to believe what he has already accomplished. For we will be guilty of unbelief if we asked him to do what he's already done. That sounds harsh, but it's true. It's good for us to check our prayers every so often, to check we're not asking for God to give us things he's already given us. <coughs> Who's noticed, those of you that are parents, leading up to Christmas, those of you with children, you might get asked, I really want this, I really want this, I really want this for Christmas, I really want this, I really want this. And it goes on and on and on. And then on Christmas, you give them what they've been asking for. And then they stop asking. They don't keep asking. Can I have it? Well, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you at Christmas. They don't keep asking because they know the truth. They've received and they don't keep asking. You know, Jesus, as I was preparing and thinking about um, this this morning, when I was thinking about joy, I began to think about Jesus. And when uh, J Jesus was the most joyful man that ever walked the face of the earth, that is that is is true. And when we think of Jesus in in the days of his humanity on earth, we think of the one who had great authority. We think of the one who performed miracle signs and wonders. We think of the one who lived a holy life. We think of one who lived a holy life in perfect obedience to his father. We think of a man of great love, who, who, who met the needs of the poor, the disadvantaged, spent time with prostitutes, with tax collectors. And all this is very true. One thing we don't necessarily think of is a fascinating thing that, that God, Father God, gives us revelation of, of Jesus through the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 1, verse 9. This is, this is God speaking on, uh, 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 on behalf of Jesus, speaking, speaking about Jesus. He said, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions, anointing you with the oil of joy. Jesus was and is the greatest expression of joy. He is joy. Jesus is joy. And Paul gives us an incredible truth in Galatians when he says, and it's a verse that most of you will be aware of, he says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Joy lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, when you become a Christian, and if you haven't become a Christian and you're here today, we can have a chat afterwards. I'd love to have a chat with you. Uh, but if you're here this morning and you've become a Christian, what happens when you give your life to Jesus is that Jesus moves in. Jesus moves in. It might sound a bit weird. He moves in. 
And when he moves in, he, he takes up permanent residence. He doesn't, he's not renting a space for a bit. He's not, he's not staying there for a little bit while you're all fired up. He moves in and he lives in you. He stays. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. This is truth this morning. So how come... How come we don't always experience joy? How come we don't always experience joy in our lives? How can we access this joy on a daily basis? What's so special about this joy of Jesus? Well, I'm going to start preaching now and I'm going to start, I'm going to mention a few points um, uh, in response to, to those questions. <coughs> the first thing that I want to say, and these are short points, I think I've got more, I, I normally have three points though, I think I've even got four this morning. Uh, so they are very short points. The first one is joy is a choice. It's a choice. Philippians 4, verse 4, says this. And again, most of us will know this text. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. This is Paul writing to the church to encourage the church and notice he's not telling the church to rejoice in their suffering. He's not telling them to rejoice specifically when they suffer. He's not telling them to rejoice when things are going well. He's not telling them to rejoice in a particular circumstance. He's telling them to rejoice always. It's very clear. Rejoice always in every circumstance. I'm constantly sharing this verse um, or these couple of verses uh, that you probably know what I'm going to say. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and to 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If we want to know what God's will is, there it is. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now I think this is one of the toughest challenges in Scripture, and there's a few. It's tough, let's be real. This is tough. But I've realised over the years that this absolutely works. It absolutely works. It really, really works really works it doesn't mean that we don't have trouble it doesn't mean we don't have trouble it doesn't mean that trials don't happen it really doesn't I had a great privilege this week um, I, can, I, can, I can say this I was, I, was, I was with Neil this week early on in, in the week um, Tuesday night and we were with someone in church um, and this was someone who's been coming along to one of our groups and they, they were wanting to respond to the message of Jesus and um, so there we were this lady this wanting to um, respond, wanting to give her life to Jesus. It was incredible. It was a wonderful, wonderful thing. And um, I wasn't selling it very well. I really wasn't selling it very well. Um, I, I really don't think I was. We were just, we were chatting away and I was saying things to, 
to this person saying, well, if you give your life to Jesus, it doesn't mean your problems are going to go away. It really doesn't mean your problems are going to go away. In fact, if anything, it's going to get worse. <laughs> That's what I said, I think. And I'm sat there and I'm thinking, Chris, what on earth are you doing? What on earth are you doing? Are you trying to pop this person off or what? I went on and I'll be honest, I paused. And like I say, I was, I'm not doing a good sales pitch here. I'm really not. But thankfully, this person just, just responded and made the commitment. But it's true. You know, I have heard people say, give your life to Jesus and, whoa, everything will be all right kind of thing. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. It's the best decision you can ever make. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But Christians are not immune from trouble. Christians are not immune from trouble. Far from it. And we need to be real. It's just that we can choose to rejoice. We can choose to rejoice, which is both a difficult and probably a strange thing to do during our trials, to choose to rejoice. But it works. It absolutely works. And God instructs, instructs us to do it, to rejoice in our suffering. Why? Because he knows what's best for us. He knows it works. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. The second thing is joy comes from his presence. Romans 16 verse 11 says, You will make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. When you spend time with Jesus, you're being filled with joy. When you spend, I got the great uh, coffee cup from Greg's. You also get joy from Greg's. Did you know that? Sip the joy. Sip the joy. You, you, get, you get joy from Greg's. Can you believe it? It actually wasn't that joyful. It was all right, but um, it, I wouldn't say it was joy. I wouldn't say it was. They were doing a false advertising thing there. Um, but it, it certainly wasn't decaf. Um, but when we spend time with Jesus, we get filled with joy. Not when we get a coffee from Greg's. When we spend time with Jesus, we get filled with joy. And one of the frequent ways that this happens for me is when I play some Christian music and I begin to start to worship God, God myself, and whether it's in the car, whether it's at home, whatever it is. And it's a guaranteed way of getting joy bubbling up inside of you. It's a guaranteed way. You have to listen to some really bad Christian music for joy not to bubble up inside of you. There is some out there. I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to do any. I'm not going to do any of that. There's too many people agreeing. That's obviously true. There is some Christian stuff out there that doesn't. There's probably not Christian stuff. Let's be honest. If it don't bring joy, if it don't bubble joy within you, there's something wrong. But it's not just jo worship that bubbles up joy within you. Uh, John um, 16, 24 says, Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. You know the scripture is full of crazy promises. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. That's a crazy promise. It's not just about worship. Talking to Jesus fills you with joy. It fills you with joy. Joy comes from the presence of God. We have God's presence with us. We have joy with us. We just need to activate it. It could be that you are facing the most difficult trial this morning. You could be following at home, you could be here, and you've got the most difficult trial going on in your life. Trouble could be right right in the forefront of what's going on. You 
You could be right there facing the greatest of, of challenge in your life. First, you need to choose joy, and then you need to activate God's presence in, inside of you. A life of faith in Jesus does not mean less trouble. But we can experience and choose joy in our suffering. Thirdly, my last two points are um, very short. Choosing joy is good for us. I'm stating the obvious, but it's, it's true. Proverbs 17.22 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Now that doesn't mean that if we're in a bad place or if we feel crushed or if we're suffering or if we're mourning, we're in a bad place. I, you need to hear me say that. I'm not, Jesus himself mourned for his best friend Lazarus. This is not, if you're not experiencing joy in your moment, it doesn't mean you're in a bad place, but it means you can choose joy. We have seasons, we have periods in our lives where joy doesn't seem to be right there. It doesn't mean that we're, I'm, this is not me beating you up. That's, it's, uh, Psalm 30 verse 5 says, For his anger lasts only for a moment, but his favour lasts for a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Another interesting text is in, in James. It tells us, and again, I think I've shared this several times recently, James 1, 2 to 4, Consider it a pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its, its work so that you be, you be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Choosing joy in our, in our trials, in our suffering, in our circumstance, produces perseverance and maturity in our lives. It's a good thing. It's good for us. We may not always feel like it, and believe you me, I understand, you may, we may not always feel like it, but sometimes we just need to make a decision. Today, I feel horrendous. Today, I've got a lot of stuff beating me up. Today, I've got a lot of stuff, a lot of circumstances that are really killing me, that are really making me struggle. But do you know what? I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to put some worship on. I'm going to read some scriptures. I'm going to declare some scriptures over my life. I'm going to speak to Jesus. I'm going to choose joy despite what I feel, despite what my circumstances are. I'm going to choose joy even, then, even when I don't feel like it. It works. It works, it works, it works, it works. It works. The final point that I want to share is that joy is a fruit of the Spirit of God. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit of God. Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, <coughs> joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. You know, one of the main reasons why I approached Liz to be an elder was that she was so full of joy. She was full of joy. She was full of joy, and, and it was a lifestyle. It was a fruit of the Spirit. It was a fruit of the Spirit. You can see how good... I'm not looking at anyone. You can see how good someone's walk with God is by their expression on their face sometimes. That sounds a bit crazy, and I don't read too much into that, but you can. You can. If someone's full of joy, but they're going through it. If someone's kind, when actually they've just been beaten up. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It's a fruit of the Spirit. 
And my personal experience is that when we are joyful, especially when we have reasons not to be, do you know what it does? It does something incredible. It's better than, and I'm not speaking against this because I'm for it, but it's better than standing on a street corner preaching the gospel. Because when, and, and I'm for that, so I'm not saying, uh, Chris is not against street preaching or anything like that. Um, but when we are joyful, when we're joyful, when we've got reason not to be, people can see it. And it's like preaching to people. People turn to Jesus. People respond. It causes people to look to Christ. And this is consistent with the scriptures. It's consistent with joy being a fruit of the Spirit. Um, it will have a positive impact on people around us. Another fruit of the Spirit is generosity. Like joy, that causes people to be thankful. We're told that in 2 Corinthians 9.11. God will give you much so that you can give away much. And when, when we t take your gifts to those in need, they will break out in thanksgiving to God and praise for your help. The fruit of the Spirit causes other people to look to Jesus. Wow. When we choose joy, we're actually evangelizing. That's what that means. When we choose joy, we're actually, we're deciding it's good for us, but it's also good for others. God uses it. So if you want to be an evangelist, choose joy. That makes sense, does it? Just to me. Right, I want to conclude Psalm 100, verse 4. Um, those of you that have got good memory will remember that I, I, I was preaching on worship, I think earlier on in the year. Um, and I shared this verse, and it's incredible, and it's true. Uh, uh, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. I don't know about you, but often for me, sometimes it's to do with my job, sometimes it's to do with a busy uh, family life and children and getting things to do, walking a dog before church, all those things. I don't know about you, but I'm often stressed on a Sunday morning. I'm being honest, I'm the pastor being honest. I, I, I often come to church stressed. I come to church walking down the path thinking, oh, have I got this, have I got that? Um, and often happens it affects that affects what you get out of church it affects what you get out of it we can come to church with thanksgiving in our hearts it's a choice we decide when we park up when we're walking up the path to be thankful I'm going to receive from God today I'm going to be joyful despite what's going on despite what's just happened despite the kids doing my head in whatever it is I'm going to be thankful I'm going to rejoice enter his God's court his gate with thanksgiving and his courts with praise give thanks to him and praise his name we'll get far more out of church Sunday morning if we come with that attitude it's a choice it's a choice so joy isn't coming <coughs> football isn't coming sorry <coughs> football's not coming home not yet it will do <laughs> I don't know where home is anyway um, joy isn't coming it's already here it's already here through personal relationship with Jesus. If you have personal relationship with Jesus, joy's here. It's a choice. It comes through being in God's presence. Choosing God, joy is like choosing good medicine. It's like giving your kids some cow pole. It's better than that. It's better than that. And it's a fruit of the Spirit which leads other people to Christ. Let's pray together.
Thank you, Jesus. Almighty God, I want to thank you for your presence. I want to thank you that you are here. We might not be able to see you in your presence, but we certainly can feel you. We certainly can sense you. We certainly know that you're here. And Lord, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you that you're here in our hearts, with us as we worship you, with us as we go from here and face whatever it is that we have before us. Lord, I want to thank you for your presence. Lord, help us to know your presence in a new and a fresh way this coming week. Lord, help us to know that you are with us despite what we feel like, that you've moved in, that you are here, that you are with us. Lord, I pray that you will help us to think about how, what, what, what we're asking you, Lord. And, and, and Lord, help us to have revelation in our hearts of the things that you have already done for us. Lord, I pray that we will have true revelation of what you've already done. Lord, I pray that you'll help us, that you'll um, spear us on to really um, look into your word and uh, get excited by your promises and what you have already done, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will um, encourage us to, 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 to look into, to seek after you and to... And to um, learn more about you and about what you've done for us and what you've already accomplished. Uh, Lord, give us revelation of that, but help us to just have a real heart to seek after you and to seek after what you've already done. Lord, so that we have an increase in knowledge and understanding of what it really means to have Christ living in us. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, as, as we do that, Lord, I pray that we will go forward in boldness, knowing that if you are for us, then who can be against us? If you are for us, then who can be against us? Nothing is impossible through you. Lord, so much can be accomplished in and through our lives when we have true revelation of this. So, Lord, I pray for your church this morning. I pray for this congregation, those listening, Lord, those here, the children in their groups, Lord. I just pray for a fresh outpouring of your spirit of who you are and what that means for us this morning, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, help us to make good choices this week. Help us to whatever is thrown at us, whatever trial we experience, whatever circumstance, help us to make good choices this week. Help us to respond by saying, whatever I face, I'm going to look to you, Jesus. I'm going to make you the center of my life. I'm going to choose joy this morning, despite how I feel, despite what's what's coming up against me uh, this day, Lord. I'm choosing you. I'm choosing you. Doesn't mean that everything's going to be all right, but I'm making that good choice. And I'm going to see you move. I'm going to see you impact uh, me, my family, and people around me as I choose. Choose joy. Choose your presence. Choose good things in my life this coming week. I pray that for each one of us, Lord. In your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What time are we on? Oh, we're all right. Plenty of time. Okay, right. Uh, Katie, worship team. We've got